Um, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Jacqueline Jane, Security Awareness Advocate at Know Before. And today we are going to be talking about the human deception problem and the science and methodology behind social engineering. A little bit about Know Before. Uh, we are the world's largest integrated security awareness training and simulated phishing platform. Our head office is in Tampa Bay, Florida. We have offices globally, including here in Australia in Melbourne. And we help tens of thousands of organisations manage the ongoing problem of social engineering, which we'll talk more about today. And we are the winner of numerous industry awards. Today, we're going to be talking about the perception versus reality dilemma, understanding the OODA loop. If you've never heard of it, it is really quite interesting, and I'm sure you'll get a lot out of that. And then how social engineers and scam artists, also known as cyber criminals, achieve their goals by subverting the OODA loop's different components, how we can defend ourselves and our organisations with plenty of industries to choose from. Why are they targeting the legal people. Well, let's have a look at why that might be. Uh, the legal sector is really so high up on the list of desirable targets for cyber criminals. And there's a few reasons behind this folks. A key motivation for a cyber attack is financial gain. And there's also disruption to consider as well. You hold a lot of sensitive client information and corporate data that hackers can profit from by selling it on the dark web or holding it for ransom using ransomware for a large sum of money. And law firms handle huge amounts of money transfers between parties and cyber criminals would want to jump in between that conversation and try and benefit from it. You're also an easy target, unfortunately. Many legal firms are easy targets for hackers because you might be using outdated IT. And remember, your focus is on the law. Your focus is not on tech. So we need to understand that. And because of that, often you're slow to adopt cybersecurity policies, despite your reliance heavily on technology these days, as with every other industry, and your use of online services. Um, and obviously the last one, one of my biggest things in life is you don't know what you don't know. Um, the focus really is, as I said, on the law and your clients and keeping up with all the things that you need to. So once you have the knowledge and awareness around the risks you face in the cybersecurity landscape, you will be better prepared. Let's take a look at the cyber threat landscape as it relates to you guys um, and also the globe itself. There's no specific areas where if you think, oh, it only happens in Australia or it only happens in um, Asia or it only happens in Europe, cybersecurity has no borders and it really is global. And cybercrime is up 600% as a result of COVID-19. A few reasons for that. Remote work has increased and therefore the average cost of a breach has increased to $137,000. So if a company is breached, that's what it can cost. If not, more. Remember, this is average. In 2020, the average time to identify a breach was 207 days. What that means is, should a cyber criminal find a way into your organization's systems, which we'll talk about how they go about that, it could take, on average, maybe longer, 207 days for a tech or people to think, hold on, something's not quite right here. 